Welcome back and thank you very much. Let's get into the news review segment. And um, we we'll start off with the Daily Guide. It says, NDC hard, uh, 200 cars for journalists. ECOWAS single currency in 2020. Too much sex caused Banku's defeat. Who's saying that? Major Maxwell Mahama trust bill in parliament. IFS tax government on revenue. And smart driver's license by November 7. DVLA rolls out, says the Ghanaian Times. ECOWAS leaders pledged to create single currency by 2020. And government presents Major Mahama Bill Trust Fund in Parliament. The Daily Graphic this morning says, prioritize revenue generation in 2018 budget. That's the IFS advising government. Their minister directs removal of problematic runabouts in Kumasi. IMF bemoans government's declining revenue and Chinese to take Ghana visas in Beijing. The Daily Heritage this morning reports that IFS profess revenue generation strategies to government. Queen Star Sawyer sensitizes women on breast cancer. The Daily Statement says no white elephants and uh, um, ID, I, one district, one factory uh, project. And uh, finally, perhaps, the front page of the Finder newspaper. It says, danger imminent. Church under construction shares war with LPG gas station. Um, productivity and profitability key to cocoa sector cocoa board. And demolition TDC dragged to court for 5 million Ghana cities. And Ye sent healthcare delivery to rural folks. Let's uh, get on to now. My guest this morning is Rudolf Amenya Etigo. Good morning, sirs. How are you doing, boss? Great. And you? Nice. Great. So we'll start off, um, and Mr. Sampai will join us on behalf of the New Patriotic Party. Um, his, um, um, yes, he's the MP for Chianapaga, but Mr. Sampine is the uh, secretary, uh, the MPP secretary for the Ashanti region. He will join us shortly uh, and uh, will c continue the conversation. But we're told, Chief, that uh, the DVL intends to roll out a digital driver's uh, licensing system by November. I is that good news? Well, um, before that, let me just say hi to my, uh, your viewers and especially the people of China Paga. Mm. Yes, it's a fact that uh, we have to make progress. Mm. So um, going digital um, is good news. Mm. But uh, what will worry the average uh, consumer of uh, DVLA services mm. will be, will this really make a difference in terms of the obstacles and difficulties we face over the years? The so-called Goro boys, will it uh, eliminate them? Mm. Uh, because um, we, we know, um, even if we don't state it, mm. that uh, these Goro boys are linked to personnel inside the DVL itself. So how will this solve some of these problems? Mm. But on average, I think that going digital, of course, is progress. Mm. So for you, that's, that's OK. Um, but one would raise a question then about for example, um, the equipment mm. that they would need to check. You know that the, uh, the roadworthy certificates that were issued mm. had some biometrics that you needed, some equipment to check. Yeah. Um, reports are that we don't have those equipments out there on the street. So you find the police and they still check with their eyes as to whether they, they are thick or not, they don't know. It, do you think that we are ready for such a move at this time? Uh, certainly, if we, if we are going to go digital, mm. uh, we have to be holistic. Mm. And the DVL cannot work without the, the enforcement agency, which is the police. So mm. If the police is ill-equipped, it means that we will have to get them ready if we have to go digital. Mm. If we are not ready to equip the police appropriately, then we are probably... Do you see a commitment out. to equip the police in that regard? The we, have, we, haven't seen, we, are, we, are, we haven't seen a, a, a budget line. Mm that says that so much has been uh, put aside to be able to equip the police mm. to, to be able to uh, cope with such a migration. Mm. So uh, we don't have evidence to, to say that mm. uh, there, there, there's commitment to equip the police. Mm. I'm, I'm curious, I mean, you're parliamentarian on behalf of the people of China Paga. In parliament, do these things come up? And if it has indeed come up, what has been the general reaction? Because the people are concerned about some of these things as well. Yeah, the, 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 these, these things do come up. 
And uh, the, the parliamentarians are certainly concerned. They okay. want uh, a situation where the, the, the road mm -hmm. is uh, used mm -hmm. in a manner that makes everybody comfortable. Okay. But then the obstacles are there. And what we would like to see is uh, a situation where a concrete proposition comes mm. for a budget line. Then we can discuss knowing that the outcome of that discussion will be actually translated into a program that will benefit all of us. Mm. But what we are seeing is uh, people actually putting forward their, uh, their own feelings and ideas about what should happen. Mm. But we are not seeing the commitment in terms of the budget. Line. So you're, you're saying on this platform that the budgetary allocations, the financial implications that we have to bear as a country, Parliament has no knowledge about it? No, 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 that's not what I'm saying. Okay. What I'm saying is mm. this. If there is a, a, a budget, okay. the budget should clearly state right. that DVLA, uh, so much money is allocated. And, and in this instance, the budget so that was read in March... In I, I never, I didn't see any such a, a commitment. Mm. So I'm saying that if they are really serious, you know, we, we ought to see that in the next budget, that mm. there's a clear commitment mm. and money is being allocated to ensure that this uh, is done. Okay. Let's hear what you think about that. And we're still expecting Mr. Sam Pine, who is uh, the regional secretary of the MPP in the Ashanti region, to join us for the conversation. 0508235228 is the WhatsApp line. We're also on Twitter and Facebook. Join us and share your thoughts and comments. So we're told that the ECOWAS single currency should be ready in 2020. And leaders of the uh, ECOWAS met yesterday. Mm -hmm. The issue of the common currency is high on the agenda. This is not the first time this matter has come up. Um, mm -hmm. Are you surprised that it's coming up again around this time? No, I, I'm not surprised. Uh, are well, you disappointed that uh, it's been mentioned over and over again? Uh, yes, in the sense that this should have happened several years ago. You know, the, the, the desire for West Africa, mm. you know, to have a single currency is part of the general desire of Africa right. to integrate. Mm. But more often, the, the rhetoric doesn't meet uh, the actions. Mm. So it's one of the things that uh, we, we, we read and we're excited, but we have uh, our, our doubts. We need some reassurance. <coughs> and this time around, we are really going to see it happen mm. in 2020. Mm. The steps towards that will have to be, the roadmap must be very clear. Mm. Mm. I, I, I find it quite um, amusing, if you will, mm. because yes, we've had to alter our passports to have that green background. Mm. Um, but then if you travel from Accra to say through Togo to Nigeria, the roadblocks um, and the treatment as if you were not part of the sub-region it's quite worrying. Have you had to experience any of oh, that? Oh, yes. I've experienced it before, traveling from Lagos by car to Accra. Right. Uh, what, I, what I can say is uh, simply that we really don't have an eco citizen in that sense. We don't have it? We don't have. Because if we have an eco citizen, then there should not be problems traveling within the eco community. Mm -hmm. So the fact that we still have problems tells you that the reality is that we don't have a, an eco mm -hmm. citizen. So we need to actually work, to actualize that. Mm. It's not about pulling a passport. It's about what the passport can do for you okay. as a traveler, as mm. a citizen. Mm. And that's what we are not seeing. But, but if, so, so then if we don't have an ECOWAS citizen, um, would an ECOWAS currency be any needful? Mustn't we get the citizens ready before we put out the currency? I, I think these are measures towards creating that citizenship. Okay. So having a common currency integrates the economy. Mm. And it's one important move towards us finally integrating also politically. Okay. So we, 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 we can say it's a good idea right. to have a common uh, currency mm. because it sends us further. Is 2020 a realistic timeline? Um, from the fact <laughs> that we seem not to be ready to surrender a bit of our sovereignty, mm. there are still sovereignty tough wars that we are fighting. I think 2020 may, for me, uh, be a bit close, be a bit close. I think we need to solve that uh, tough problems on mm. citizenship mm. and sovereignty before mm. we can make such a bold uh, 
uh, what do you call it, commitment. I think that we probably will need mm. more than four years to more than more than four years. Yeah, you just so. anyway, and and you can join us. Let's uh, get into the groove now. Mr. Yeah. Sampine has joined us. He is the Ashanti <laughs> Regional Secretary of the MPP. Mm. Chief, welcome. Thank you. I, I like your shirt. It's, it's it looks like something the president wore a few weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> How are you well, doing, that's, sir? That's, that's, that. <coughs> oh, that's <coughs> good Sorry. promoting mm. made in Ghana products. Mm -hmm. um, I like your smoke, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At least we are showcasing mm -hmm. um, the spirit of the Ghanaian. Mm -hmm. He is noted for wearing a lot of smoke. <laughs> yeah, a, lo a lot of smoke. Mm -hmm. Maybe really? you are also noted for wearing a lot of uh, prints. So we should be giving some award yeah. uh, by TV3. <laughs> Next week, we'll find you. <laughs> okay. We'll, we'll find you. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, mm -hmm. let me quickly pick your thoughts about this. Um, the DVLA hints of... Uh, a digital uh, driver's licensing regime, and and they, they intend to go fully digital by 7th November. Um, the timelines, realistic? What do you think about it? Thank you very much, and let me say a very good morning to you and my friend and to your cherished viewers, mm -hmm. and those who are also listening. I mean, some are not watching, but they are listening to us. Right. Um, and I, I pray to the good Lord for giving us a day to the world is moving in a certain direction. And I think technology is taking over right. almost every facet of our, our lives. And therefore, if we have systems that technology can mm -hmm. adapt to, they have value. I think that's something good. Okay. Um, over the years, we had issues with people faking driver's licenses, mm -hmm. other documents mm -hmm. for which are national documents too, even though they may belong to you, but okay. national documents. And therefore, if there are system that to curtail some of these um, infractions, I believe it's a good thing. Mm. But I, I don't know how they've gone through with um, the step that they've taken and all that. Mm. I believe it's important to educate the people enough. Right. Let them understand what you intend doing. Mm. Let them know the benefits of it all, and not most about it, you know, Ghana, we're going to come in with a cost analysis and all that mm. because definitely the drivers are going to pay or we are going to pay something before we, we, we acquire those licenses. Mm. And therefore, I believe, yes, we should be very um, down to earth, educating them, letting them know what is important about mm. these, the cost and all that. And if this is done, mm. I believe, yeah, we have is a Is it your transition. opinion that the DVLA has the capacity to do this? Because, yes, we have been told of the roadworthy certificates which are supposed to be digitized. And to today, uh, if you go onto the streets, the police use their eyes to check it. Um, the equipment are not there for the police to use to verify whether you have a fake or you have a credible one. And we know you, that grown boys are you in the You bring system. in the police and uh, it takes me to um, this pillar two dummy road. There's mm. a, a roadblock, mm. a barrier there. And there's this particular police officer who's there and on that date of the night checks driver's licenses and huge traffic. I mean, people are close from where they want to get home, and that's when he decides to <coughs> check. Um, I mean, the IGP should take a look at that mm. place. And, mm. But you see, um, this issue about the number place and all that came up, and people felt the cost, if you remember, yeah. just before mm. that, that Wahala with the towing levy and all mm. that. So I believe that was what brought about the, the the halting of that process and going through with the stakeholders and all that. But I know that, yes, they have the capacity. Now, having the capacity, mm -hmm. it's not about the institution <laughs> building the, 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 what they call the cars themselves. Mm -hmm. they, they hire experts to do that for them. And you, if you remember, some four, three years ago, mm -hmm. they had some infrastructure to that effect. And therefore, if they want to go on that tangent, I believe, yes, they can do it. What is important is that mm -hmm. they should give it to a qualified um, vendor mm. to produce these mm. cards and all that. In fact, Honorable Rudolph raises a question about um, having the, the financial implications properly spelt out so we know how much we're going to spend, where we're going to spend it, especially captured in the budget. As of now, the last budget that was read didn't have anything of the sort. Uh, about this DVLA thing, no, but, uh, so, so that by November seven, when we I believe, intend to I believe the it. road ministry, um, uh, the transport ministry has a budget, okay, and as it's an agency of that ministry, definitely there will be a budget 
for them. Mm. So we need not spell it out in the budget that yes, we are giving this money to DBLA. But the budget of the transport, um, the road transport ministry, the, that takes the, charge of but, that. But, but, but the budget was spelled out. I mean, yeah. the allocation that was given to the ministry was properly spelled indicated. out what it was going to be used for. But it was yes. indicated that they would give this much to DBLA. No, not at all. Well, then we need to ask because uh, so, some of, especially <laughs> myself, I'm not privy to, to that to particular right. arrangement. Mm. So if the, 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 there's a need to spell it out well. Fine, that's mm. that's good accountability and transparency. Okay, let's move on now. And they were told by the Daily Graphic, page 16, that the Interministerial Committee Against Illegal Mining has recommended that the government adopt a policy that will enjoin Chinese arriving in Ghana from China to secure their visas at the Ghana Embassy in Beijing instead of being issued with visas on arrival in Ghana. Uh, this statement was made in the Eastern region. So our fight against Galamsey has gotten to this pedestal where we say, no, uh, get your visas before you get in here. Would, will it solve anything, Honorable? Uh, well, <clears throat> I think uh, it indicates for me, first and foremost, uh, the fact that the, our immigration uh, officers in Accra mm. uh, maybe are taught as not performing their duties to the optimum. Mm. So people who ought not to get in may be getting. Mm. So they are thinking that it will be more difficult if they have to do that at our, at our embassy in China before they, they even move. Mm. But the ultimate question is, do we need a Chinese partnership the development of our mining industry. If we need Chinese partnership, let's rather uh, enforce the rules, mm. the law uh, on mining. So if you are coming here as a Chinese, there should be clear <coughs> capacity mm. and you should be coming with arrangements that comply with our local law. Mm. And therefore the problem of visa shouldn't arise if you are coming is going to be something that will inure to the benefit of this economy. Mm. But if we don't uh, get all these things straighten up mm. um, and people are coming here based on just speculative ideas about what they're coming to do mm. they'll find ways and means of coming is this a slap in the face of diplomacy uh, uh, well I won't call it a slap but okay. I, I will think that we should be worried of the fact that if we decide to take measures okay they could also be reciprocal measures so we should uh, handle it with a bit of diplomatic care because China is certainly a very important uh, global player when it comes to uh, uh, a, a, the economy and they have muzzle. Mm -hmm. So if you are taking measures, you should be sure that there are measures that will be understood mm -hmm. and will not necessarily generate some countermeasures that mm -hmm. may not be present to us. Mr. Sampai, so this is what uh, the Minister for Chieftaincy and Religious Affairs is saying, Mr. Uh, Kofi Jamesi. He says that, well, no visas for you uh, here on arrival even though that provision was made because um, of where countries where, for example, we don't have a Chinese uh, consulate here so that they would benefit. But it looks as if they're taking us for a ride. So it says, no, let me put my feet, foot on the ground. And, and you and see, um, we may be have doing business with countries, but that doesn't mean those countries that we are doing business with should treat us with contempt. Mm. And the, the, the policies that we put in place, they should treat that with um, contempt that would be to the detriment of Ghana. Mm. When you're going to China now, initially Ghanaians were not picking visas before they enter China. Mm. Businessmen, mm. they go with thousands of dollars, millions of dollars to China to buy goods, do business there, mm. but they take visas from Ghana before they go there. And that means it's a difficult thing even acquiring a Chinese visa. If we believe, yes, and it's a fact that some of them when they get in, abuse these privileges that we give to them. Mm. If you remember, some time passed, a lot of them were rounded up mm. for not even having visas. Some came with visa visas and they ended up doing galamse, other businesses in the country. So as a nation, we should take the right steps mm. to make sure that those who enter, though we are not going to treat them as enemies, they should also conform to the laws of the land. Mm. And therefore, if this is what they think can stop in some way, or even ameliorate um, the effect of what these people are, are, are doing, I believe it's in a good, it's in good mm. direction because um, we do business with the Americans. We do business with the British. Okay. When we go in there, we take visas. Mm. At times, big businessmen get bounced when they get, they get to these counters to pick their 
their visas. Mm. So to check the activities, because it's been very wide. We go to the Ashanti region, the AC region, the Western region. Recently, <laughs> if you remember, we've been discussed there when a Chinese allegedly shot a Ghanaian in the Wasa areas. Right. Mm. How, what is his status here? Mm. Some commit crimes and offenses and they are unable to be arrested. Oh, they must be deal with them. Right, right. Yes. So yeah. therefore, if the law, the law mm -hmm. is going to deal with them, one of the measures that the law should, should monitor whoever mm -hmm. enters. So if I pick a visa before I enter, you are, you are queued into our, our database that mm -hmm. yes, um, him, Chong, him, or whoever is, is, is entering the but, country. But is, is, it for this the is it not the same? I mean, if you get visa on arrival or visa yeah. from, from home, um, our immigration services should be able to deal with these issues. They should be able to do that. We have the <coughs> past where instances where we, you, you know it. I, I mean, don't, I don't know. You tell me. 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 People, 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 are not up and doing. They will still come. I'm not even going to talk. I was uh, going to talk uh, uh, about the, some of the immigration officers as, 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 as a all. port of entry. Mm, yes, it is. is true. They come here. It's similar to picking a visa in Ghana. But um, when they come here too, at times, we have instances. We have examples. We have we hear news about like some what? officials okay. doing aiding what? them to when even they have, they give them 30 days and mm. they will stay. Mm -hmm. They just who look the other way and so yes mm. it is true mm. that if they pick their visas from their home countries it may also pose some of these difficulties mm. but it's also as an ammunition up to my, our my, immigration my, officers my to make sure that uh, yeah, they also work according to the rules my, my difficulty mr sometimes <coughs> is that well if i pick a visa and it says i have six months or three months and i come here and they, the official here allows me to overstay what would have been the purpose of this directive from the Minister for Chieftaincy and Religious Affairs? It would have been a total fiasco then. No, when, when you were stay, the law should work. I mean, people go to the U.S., to Europe, and the rest, and they were they are very sensitive. And when they are caught, they are expatriated. They are brought back Do, do we do that here? We, I, I, we've done it a little. I believe this. We should be tougher on this. Don't let us be like, we want investors, we want investors, therefore we should relax our laws to that extent. Mm. It's also about capacity. Right. You see, we need to spend more on our immigration and security services in general security. to improve equipment, okay. improve technology, and improve knowledge. If all these things are not done, you know, uh, holistically, you can have the best laws. The policeman probably doesn't even have the equipment and the know-how to detect that uh, somebody uh, ought to have been brought to book or even deported. Mm -hmm. He's probably taking some manual book and checking some things. When at this uh, uh, date and age, mm -hmm. you know, there should be more advanced technological uh, equipment to support. So mm. we need to invest more in our security. Okay. Interesting. Uh, let's wrap up on this one. So the one the strip factory uh, policy, uh, Mr. Jamesi says they would want to start and focus on such mining areas. I've always asked a big question. Between the lame dark period, when we said stop Galamse, till when the one the strip factory actually will start, in between that, what do we expect the people to do, and how do we expect them to do what they do? Because there's logging as we speak, logging in many places and in most of the mining areas, because they can't go and mine because we sent the Operation Vanguard there. They are now logging, and that's a big cost concern. When is the One District One Factory coming up, Mr. Sampai? Oh, the One District One Factory, uh, I believe, you remember in August, uh, before, a day before our, our conference in Cape Coast. Mm -hmm was launching the Kunfi and the, um, according to investigations and um, the statement from the department um, work is ongoing mm -hmm. with that. There are other companies that are also in consultation with um, the Ministry of Trade and with mm -hmm. the, that, that um, um, one is one factory set up okay. working on some others. And I believe that yes, they are also going to come on board mm. but as we speak now everything's on course and that so beyond that, the launch that, beyond the launch what else i mean oh, it's, it's it's not a purely um government owned initiative but it's, it's supervised by government of course yes and mm. even some funding is also secured by government to help but it's a ppp a private 
public sector um, participation. Mm -hmm. So that's what. So we have when you go there, you have as I speak with you, we have more than one thirty um, companies that have enrolled mm -hmm. and we want to be. So they are checking their backgrounds, mm -hmm. looking at feasibility. The, the most important is that they are looking at sustainability. Mm -hmm. That if we, we have the factories there and they are working, we're not going to have a five-year, three-year, <coughs> ten-year period where they also go defunct like some of the state-owned enterprises have been. And therefore, if they are sustained, that's what's going to be. But the part, your question of what are we doing? That, yeah. yeah, I believe that, yes, if you are taking people where they, they should be given some alternative um, livelihood. Right. Yes. And which the government is working on. I remember we, we were told that the one this two pound factory will serve as that. No, as that, that's it's an example that it's an example that they gave, but it's basically not that uh, everywhere is going to have a factory. If you go right. to the Tapa areas, for <laughs> oh, instance, no, 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 you have your bites. <laughs> if you go to the Tapa areas, for instance, and you have a factory there, yes, it's not everybody who's going to get um, jobs at the factory, but there should be other livelihoods. Um, um, programs for them to, mm. to engage in. You see, this is an interesting subject to me. I told you that, that I, I did some work on uh, sustainable right. development. And therefore, right. mm. it's something that I want to see. Mm. Now, you see, I, I remember going to Takwa to mm. do some interviews, Takwa and Suyayim, Pista areas. And I asked the guys about, why not get some alternative like instead of doing Galab, say that mm. is destroying the environment. Now, they, they asked, so I told them, yeah, there's this hybrid purple that mm. it's good for exports and brings in lots of cash. You know the answer some of the guys gave me? Mm. Said the Chinese who are here doing the Galamsey, did they know that planting purple there was going to give them money and they decided to come here to buy? So you see the psyche of the people too. Mm. So yes, you have the, the will to make sure that yes, we are going to get them this, do that, that do that, that. But the, 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 the psyche of the people mm. is also important and this is a matter that we, we cannot just sit here and discuss it alone, mm -hmm. but we need the efforts. But, but your voice goes very far. You're, you're a big man in your party, and your party is in government. No, but so we are all, we are, we are. No, no, but you, you are, are big, you're a big man in your party. You're a big man in the media, you're a big man in parliament. Mm -hmm. we all but, but your party is in parliament. You're a big man. <laughs> but, but they, 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 do, they, they make sure okay. the laws are working. But, but you, you are, but you are, you big are the, 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 is it the fourth or the fifth estate? It's the fourth estate of the world. Yes. I'm coming to so, once I don't have an estate, yes, but, 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 but you are a big man in government. You're closer to the reins of power. What commitment or what, what who would you speak to anybody and say that yes, the people in on the grounds they have stopped the galamse, but they are calling for this now speedy, this is, this speedy is, action the, yes. for one district. Um, one the, the, I think um, the, especially the small scale miners make a representation to the minister, mm. and which I know they are working on. Uh, other Do we have timelines? Well, I cannot speak on that uh, because I'm not I'm not privy to. The, com uh, the, the comprehensive discussion okay. so far mm -hmm. on this matter. But what I know is that they are working on something that would be, you cannot simply take the, 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 the food out of the mouth of people right. and make them go hungry. Uh, Honorable Rudolph, you, you wanted to have a bite quickly yeah. and then we'll Yes, yes. I think, I think on the, using the uh, one, district one, one, district one factory as the alternative to provide a livelihood to people in Galamse areas, I, I, I think we, we have to um, take a more serious approach. Mm. You see, the fact is that one 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 district, one factory, mm. um, still remains for me a pipe dream. Why why why, why do you say that? Why, why do I say it remains a pipe dream? This is a program that is depending on private sector response, mm. and we will often say that private sector is the engine of growth. But the truth is that the private sector in an economy like ours, which is a, a, a dependent economy, mm. but I will call it a surrogate economy because it's actually depending on a foreign, foreign economic muzzle. Mm. Uh, we 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 we're expecting that the, the private sector will respond. The private sector is also looking at the government rather to provide the the the, the, the neighboring environment, mm. and it's having incapacities in providing uh, what is necessary for it to also respond. Mm. So at the end of the day, we we'll we we'll just be discussing theory. Mm. So you can see that. Uh, we are now about uh, 10 months or 9 months into the life of this government. I'm sure very pe pe people will soon be asking for a list of the, 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 the factories that have been 
that are emerging as a result of this policy. Ha has any been earmarked in your constituency, China Paga? Uh, no, no, not that I know of, because there's a share note uh, a thing that uh, was started some time ago. Mm. Uh, it's the only thing that I can, I can think about and I've heard. Mm. Uh, but, uh, but are there options uh, that, that the government can explore oh, that you could oh, advise oh, the government we, 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 we have a lot of vegetable uh, cultivation there. Okay. Um, uh, wh wh which uh, a lot can be done either by way of processing a lot can also be done by way of even vegetable oil which we have a, a production going on in the Tunnel Valley mm. soya bean and, and what have you but what I'm saying is that we haven't zeroed we are expecting that one, one Mr. Kwesi a, a businessman will emerge in China Paga mm. with a proposal to put up something mm. and government then uh, support and I'm saying that if we don't have a concrete idea of what government itself intends to do right. and we are just mm -hmm. thinking that there will be a response from the private sector we, 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 we may be in for a long dream friends in opposition uh, no, they are wish that yes, this policy feels and therefore they will have some Oh, is message. that your wish? Of that course, that's, 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 that's what. That, that, that the one this week, one factory policy fails. That's what. Oh. The, yeah, that's why. That, oh, that's what they do. Well, well, and they well, begin. Well, they begin with the clearly. Please. When we went to the the commentary from the nobody, commentary from the nobody, nobody, and all of them nobody, suggested that oh, you nobody will get a wish. Now you tell us that it's a dream because it is no, no. We want to succeed. Ghanaians to be able to enjoy all over the world now. No government, but if you are having a direct manufacturing. Yes. No government. Mm -hmm. They are partnering the private sector to make sure it works. And even as <laughs> part of the policies of Ghana mm -hmm. for the past two decades is the, the, the need to make sure that there's government, uh, government partners, the, the, the private sector, to create jobs. Mm -hmm. And that's what we are doing. And go there. I can tell you, even yesterday, some people were with me discussing how they can develop their or into quarrying, mm -hmm. looking at how they can expand it, develop it into a factory for the Quabre enclave. Just yesterday, and I asked them, I gave them the directions to the place and their proposal that they should take it there. These are people who came wholeheartedly. You, you don't know from anywhere. Pardon me. People you don't know from anywhere. No, I know I know one or two right. guys, but I've done this guy, I did not ask them. Okay. But they are in they industry, came willingly to they come. came with okay. that and said, Yeah, this is the proposal that so I directed them to that office okay. and that they should go sit down with the expert okay. there. They will look I'm not a, an expert in So so no, but this is an example uh, of no, he, he people said, he responding he said, to he the call. He directed the person. Mm -hmm. You see, I'm saying that we we are still talking uh drawings so. mm -hmm. when uh, uh, going to enter in the last quarter of the year. No, but we never gave timelines for yeah. who we are going to finish. The timelines we are never important. gave timelines. We don't tell them that within one year we are going years. to build 250 or 300 mm. factories. We so never said so. There should be timelines. You understand? We never said and so. And that's how we can, uh, we, can, we can check you and see whether you are making but, progress But, but over not. time, uh, the president has consistently clarified that, well, mm. this is it. We may not necessarily have a factory in every uh, every one of our 260 districts, and and they have. And there there is not one district one factory. Mm. There is not one district one factory. It's not. So there's there's no need saying. No, uh, but, but but you can. You, you can if you give a name, so, especially we're living in this damning uh, oh, issues. Mm. You think every part of the three northern regions, every village, you need. Then you go to some place, the geography there will tell you you cannot even cite so, so a, a, a damn there. So why you, why, why you give it any more? So so it, 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 it's it's propaganda, right? Yeah, it's propaganda. You see, yeah. you know what, what, what you, you, damn one village is not what you really want to do. Okay. But it's catchy. Dream, so dream, dream the propaganda that they dream, and so, when the reality so, hits you, so propaganda that's should be managed. That, yes. let, let's let's, let's uh, talk in, in, let's such, talk. A, in such a way that it brings about healthy debate and development. But it is <laughs> okay. just used, mm. you know, for the sake of catching votes. Let, let's know. have a, a conversation on, on something that borders on the health of, of mm. children, a uh, school feeding program. Mm. So we want to have a healthy debate now. Four million Ghana cities are rares, and the women are out there, they are demonstrating. They are not happy about it, and they say, look, you have cancelled their contracts. You are not paying them the arrears, and, and it's worrying to them. What, what is happening in the area of school feeding program? Yeah, yesterday I listened to the PRO for the program. I also listened to the national coordinator of the program. And they 
spoke about efforts and the amounts that they've even dispersed so far mm. to those who have their scenarios. Okay. If you remember, this school feeding program has not been something that has come so easy for them in, uh, uh, in this execution, especially in the past four years. Mm. I remember some schools, some caterers in the Bronga half of Ashanti region, Eastern region, were up in arms with the former government, the, 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 the uh, Mohammed's government over non-payment of um, their monies. So it's a matter with them that yes, um, looking at when and how they disperse these monies is a little bit of a problem. But the most important thing that they need to apart from them playing politics mm -hmm. and making it look as if the world is coming to an end is that the matter is that efforts have been made they, they simply, some of them simply don't want to be very honest with the truth, mm. and they make it look that they've not been paid a dime. But the ministry has paid monies, totaling about 250 million so far, to these caterers. Mm. So they have arrears, yes. So they, therefore, if they, the ministry says, yes, you have arrears, and we're going to pay, mm. give them this time, we have timelines for you, next week we're going to release about 10 days of that the next time we do this yeah that is how we go because so, so, so it's not been a matter mm. that in the past they were paid um the whole of the terms um, fee to them to go and prepare the food somewhere even those times these same countries who are now in arms were then were complaining without even telling the world that they owe them arrears in the past administration and it's, it's so you, you think so, they are being unfair to the government I can I can describe it so, especially uh, and being also some a little bit of dishonesty there because you've been paid certain amounts. Well, if not gotten all, you don't create the impression to the world that you don't don't create the impression yeah. to the world that a dime has not been paid to you. That's that's the beef that I have with them. Mm. Honorable yeah, yeah. school feeding program. Mm. Uh, it always gets to hit a snag when it comes to payment. You know the children will enjoy their meals. Then when it comes to payment, sometimes we will have to hold on. And the children won't get the food, and then before we pay arrears and all those issues, can we ever get beyond it? Yeah, I think I, I think um, the general uh, attitude should should be good planning. I think we probably don't plan well as to how to feed our our children. If we plan well, and uh, the budget is prepared, monies are allocated, and they are not used for other purposes, we should be able to solve this problem. But uh, having said that, I think that if people had contracts to, so, to cook for school children and the contracts are, are, are abrogated, mm -hmm. before you abrogate those contracts, you should know uh, the things that will fall out of that abrogation. Mm -hmm. So if you, are, if you are abrogating, you should also be preparing to fulfill the, their, their, their side of the bargain. Your responsibility is to show that if you are leaving them off, you leave them off of all that they deserve. Mm. But if you abrogate and you don't even have an idea how and when you are going to pay them what is due them, that is rather unfair. Mm. And uh, my brother was talking about uh, that in previous times they didn't hear them complaining. As if they are now just complaining because a, a, a different government is in power. Yeah, that's the one they are saying. I, I, th I think that is a... That, 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 that is a all those who speak uh, for them, that, that is the they saying. That is a very unfortunate statement. And, and they even go about... These are poor kids you know, who are suffering. Their children have to be in Rudolph, school. Let me tell you one thing. They have thing. to pay their medical that's bills. Program. Mm. And, it's a program and, that's yearly, <laughs> annually, renewable. That contract that they give to them mm. is renewable so, so, annually. But don't they have a legitimate At the time, or a concern to ask for their money? They have. Yeah. I'm not big George in that. Their they have. Were, but I'm were, also looking at it that the they need to be a little that. honest with the truth. Mm -hmm. That yes, don't let them create the impression that not a dime been paid to them. Mm -hmm. That's the cry. Uh, well, that I saw mm -hmm. on your screens yesterday and three days ago, mm -hmm. wanted to portray to the world that since they have brocaded the contrast, not a dime been paid to them. And you say that's not correct? Yes. They, they need to be very honest. Yes, they're giving a sum, but they still owe a sum. Tell the world, we all support that. So pay them, yes, because they offered the services and therefore they should be paid. But you don't you create see, the impression that nothing has been paid to what you. He, what he said earlier is that some amount, it messages 250 million, what do you of say? Course, right. so far this and he's assuming right. that if 250 million is said to have been paid out, it means each caterer had a share. Of it's, course, it's yes. possible that All of some caterers, no. We, 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 we have been, do, do, do we have, have the list, evidence? Yes. The list of how the disbursements of the 250 was done. Well, well, definitely well, for, for accountability's sake, for budgeting's sake, you have the so, list. 
Okay, no, I, I don't I, have that. I'm, I'm saying, so I'm, let's, I'm asking let, let's get for, for the list um, to the effect of what uh, Honorable Rudolph is asking that perhaps not every single caterer who is owed money might have benefited from the first tranche of payment that was done. Yes, it's the minister that can uh, provide us with that information. I don't have that. So it's not answer. justifiable to say but, that some people each have had something and they are still complaining. It's, 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 because you don't even have the evidence to say what you are saying. Oh. Go but, to but, the but, district. But, 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 it doesn't mean everybody. Honestly, if you have the work that yes, and you pay two fifty million and then the sixty five got it, can the forty five complain? And there, but that's but the point I'm saying. The, that. the situation is that I would rather give the benefit of the doubt about to the two hundred and fifty million yeah. mm. to them as part payment. Mm. When they talk about to them, if we have a thousand of them, uh, the thousand of them are supposed to benefit. If along the way some coordinator somewhere mismanaged issues and some people have not been paid a little bit mm -hmm. of what they owe them. That's a different matter. Okay. But why would you not take the caterer's issues as the truth and leave out the ministry I, when I, the ministry I, is I'm also telling them worried about this, this, this matter because of the free SHS and the fact that the children will get free meals and these students will get free lunch every afternoon. Um, the, the conversation stretches into that. That's also school feeding. That's uh, it. We have two different angles. Okay. The fundings for the programs are different. Mm. What from the school feeding, the funding from the school feeding, and the policy is different, and the policy for the free SHS is also different. Mm. So we, we, let's tackle it from those two angles. If mm. you want to look at it, yes, we, these are all programs that will make sure that it should be sustainable. That mm. is what we can. But the governor assured us over and over that, yes, adequate preparation be made for especially the, the, the free SHS, mm -hmm. and therefore schools are not going to have their heads to worry about feeding, especially the day students. And those in, I'm in a secondary school myself, and I know what's going on and that. They're having regular meals, and they, they, the children are so happy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm very <really> surprised. <laughs> Why are you surprised? surprised? You know what? No. I have contrary evidence. That they are not feeding them. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. That they are not feeding them. Listen, allow him to. You know the menu for the first years. Eh? Mm -hmm. It's different from the menu for the other students, the continuous students. Mm -hmm. And what is in that menu? The the cash to back that is not there. So oh, please, what is in your in your constituency? Oh, I I, I not just in my constituency. Okay, so <laughs> where where, my where does this evidence point? Look, uh, the, the evidence points to to the fact that. The proposition to give the first years very good meals is not happening. What so, they are eating so, so is the, ordinarily so, what the so, other so, students so, are eating. Hold on, sir. Because so, it's not backed by the cash. Okay. But what are they eating? Honorable Rudolph, the, the menu you saw. Please, I know, I know schools. Eh? Mm -hmm. I know, I know schools where you were supposed to eat beef. They're supposed to eat this. The menu is very different from the other menu. And what are they eating? That is they different are eating from that. Ordinarily, what they are using to feed the other students, which is not what the menu is proposing. Look, when you come to my school, for mm -hmm. instance, if they are supposed to take egg, the day that they are to take egg, the day they mm -hmm. take, take beef, the day they take chicken, uh, fish, it's ongoing. It's ongoing. So, so I'm uh, surprised that, school that must you see, be, it's always like So, so which school, said, which school's uh, menu did you see? Oh, I've seen that of Laura Secondary School. Okay. And you can go and, and they are not abiding by it. It's not they are not abiding. It's not supported by the, the cash. You don't have the, <laughs> the, the means to give the kind of menu. How? I'm, I'm, I'm surprised. Go and check. This is Baba, Baba, I'm, and not, check. I'm not, I'm not doubting he? what he's Go saying. Check. That is the truth. It's not he the said, truth, though. But this, the capacity he's using the, 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 the to say so to is that he's not there. From the, the onset the of this cash. program, the, the free SHS, the then he's just being against it. Oh, so they will come and sit here and tell the world that it is not working. When the students are benefiting, you can call the headmasters. I'm please give you an example. Is Laura? Laura Senior High School. Call the headmaster, call the the brothers and all that, and check. Because I know it's not a fact. I know from my school at Anglican Senior High School in Kumasi, I can point to the fact that, yes, they are enjoying it. According to what the government says, the meal that they should be given. Corn beef. Go to go to school must be very like that. Are you benefiting from the three no, 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 no,
at the so why would you, why wouldn't you want others to also benefit from this? Oh, who's saying that? No, no nobody's saying, saying that. He hasn't said that. He hasn't said that. No, 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 I haven't said that. No, but when you tell us that no, it's, not working, that. That. it's not working, it's not going to work, and that's no, 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 bad by what you know. That's what it is. Not. Okay. 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 Um, the screen is okay. So we'll pick some messages on and on the conversation we've had so far. Um, okay, so WhatsApp, you can send it to us 050 It says, Good morning, um, TV3. Uh, where's Dr. Baumia? Somebody who always needs to organize the secondary school, uh, it says pupils, they are students during the campaign time. Uh, today, what is going on in the country? Free SHS should not be done in a rush. All we're saying is that it should have been progressively free as enshrined in the NDC manifesto. Free SHS cannot be used as a gamble for political expediency. MPP will surely pay the price for uh, fooling Ghanaians with that good, uh, this good but poorly implemented uh, initiative. Osman Brugisson in Tamil. Alasa one I was says, good morning to you and your viewers. The people of the Upper West region show their appreciation and thanks, Barka, to the president for bringing free SHS and restoration of, gentlemen, hold on, teachers and nurses allowance. God bless, Mr. President. Gentlemen, sorry about that. We're, we're reading some messages for our guests. Uh, adversity is a fact of life. It can be controlled. Uh, thank you very much. Okay. I think the security force must beep up their operations because the armed robbery are becoming too much of late. And we, the citizens, should also help the police to identify the armed robbers staying in our territories. Nana Anochi in Kentikonu. Yakubu Iwalewale says, Operation Weed, NPP out of power for taking the country Ghana uh, and rule with propaganda, lies and hardship on Ghanaians. NPP promised making Ghanaians living condition better. But as a layman living in Walewale and a professional teacher, I teach at Walewale uh, Junior High School for the past two months, I have thought with our salaries, how do I take care of my family? Because um, of the name uh, validation process, you say. MPP also promised of paying teacher salary areas up to date. Zero payment is still ongoing. MPP also promised of making free education for Ghanaian students and end up destroying the quality of education in Ghana. Well, okay. Good morning, please. Uh, okay, we'll, we'll talk about that shortly. Alasa Wana is why says, Good morning to you and your panelists. The government is undertaking specific policy and practical intervention initiatives, including capacity building, international cooperation, judicial enforcement of cybercrime legislation, and implementation of technical standards. And uh, save, to say back, uh, well, scourge. Nanado, giving Barbara Mahama a job in your government is not going to solve the problem. For Christ's sake, she was not jobless when the husband got murdered like a baller bed. I beg, give the hero a deserving justice. Well, we're told that the bill has been sent to Parliament by the Honorable Defence Minister. So, uh, the President is fulfilling what he promised, I think. Good morning, TV3 crew. Uh, Senior Bright to report himself. Well, Bright will come. Uh, our railway, our railway uh, should be well structured. If you go outside Ghana, their railway is totally different and uh, well mechanized. Not it, even it's electricity that operates them. Okay. Thank you very much, Oscar. Uh, Johnny, we're seriously not enthused about the way the Minister for Gender is running the school feeding program. This program is not a military operation for it to be run in such an insensitive manner. If value cannot be appreciated, depreciation should not be the alternative. Uh, the current state of the feeding program is stinking. It's not funny at all. Not good for Ghana. Hashtag save the school feeding program. Emilia in Sawasi says, instant of giving quality education, or instead of giving quality education, they are trying to give phones to students. Ha! What a visionless administration of the day. Aren't we ashamed? We talk about free education, that our children aren't learning anything due to uh, lack of all the things that will help them achieve their dreams. Madam Information Minister should please come again. That's the communication minister you mean. Uh, Ghana deserves better. Okay. Uh, Good morning, Mr. Presenter. Uh, you know my brother, our railway needs to be restructured. Uh, no need to wait until the uh, rise of happenings to cause damage uh, before we rise up. Uh, thank God no debt is recorded. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, Johnny, it's not about lack of commitment to implement the ECOA single currency. It's about setting convergence requirements the West African countries must meet. For example, the countries must equally have single digit inflation, lower interest rate, three to six months import cover in terms of foreign reserve at their central banks and others. However, when some two countries from the ECOWAS region met and the convergence requirements, others struggle to meet them. There's also the issue of certain countries who might want to cook up their country's economic outlook 
outlook or reports, making the whole process difficult to come to a finality. Jacob Anand Okan from Teshi C. Lady. Thank you very much. Bonti Benjamin in Achieve Bwako says, we pray the resolution by the Equals leaders to revive the process that will make members trade with the common currency by 2020 yields the best results to enhance the economic potentials among member states. ECOWAS deserves better. AU Farouk says, where is this incompetent government sending us to? Everything they do is like a mirage. God save us. Good morning, TV3. We are not serious as a country because on one hand, our brothers are asked to stop Galamse, yet government is busy giving new concessions to foreign mining companies and they are on, uh, uh, they are on our side mining. Come to Talency District and you see things for yourself. Philip Yin from Tungo. And government should be ready for more de uh, demonstration, especially from teachers because they have failed teachers as they have refused to pay our rear senior in Adidome. And good morning, TV3. Some caterers have not received their monies at all. Madame Grace Atiodong from Congo and uh, others are victims. Philip Ying from Tongo. Interesting uh, what the thoughts expressed there. But let's get on to uh, another issue that has come up. The Kwesi Boche report uh, has come up. We're told that the NDC had 200 cars intended for presidential correspondence. Uh, they never got wind of it. Only about five of them got it. Some quarterly amounts that were supposed to have been paid to them and, and so many other things. Um, we have had members of the NDC uh, discredit the report and say it is not out. What the media is quoting from is fake and all of that. Is the report out yet, Honorable? I will say no comment. Why? Uh, for the simple reason that every party has a structure. Mm -hmm. It's run by uh, uh, a structure, this leadership. Mm. Our leadership is saying that report mm. is fake. Mm. And that's what I stand by. The, mem the members of the committee are not dis uh, dismissing the report. So, which members of the committee? Mm. The committee was commissioned to do a particular job. Right. It has done its job. The report is not theirs anymore. Okay. The report belongs to the party. Mm. The party has a, a, a governing body. The governing body is saying that that report is fake. The issues that I am emanating, the issue that I am emanating from the report must be very uh, which report are you talking disturbing. about? Disturbing. Which report? Disturbing. Which report? Mm. The Chrissy report. The fake report. You are report. Or which report? So it's fake. I'm saying that is what the position H have is. Have you seen the that report? Oh, I don't need to see the report. Okay. I, you don't need to oh, see I need it. To, I need to trust and believe in what my leaders say. And my leaders are saying that there's no report like that out there. Mm. And that's what about it. So would you like to see the report? Oh, would I like to see the report? Yes. Of course. Mm -hmm. Of course. Why wouldn't I like to see the report? Okay. Anyway, Mr. Sampai, so the, the report, yeah, Honorable says it's fake, and, and that's, that's been the, the, the song we've been hearing, that it's fake, it's fake, it's fake. Uh, and yet the media continues to quote portions of that report. This is what we're told, that 200 cars were earmarked for presidential correspondence. They didn't get it. Some amounts of money, they didn't get it. Uh, we're told also that money meant for campaign and other, you know, uh, situations were not out there. Mr. Boafu, for example, of the Cocoa Board, says that between uh, 16th and 24th of December alone, we have about some 400 million uh, dollars. dollars spent. I, this, is this report fake in your eyes as well? The, the report is genuine. How do you know that is genuine? Of course. Uh, can you show me a copy? But you've not seen it. Can you you've not read it, and you tell me it's fake. Can you show, no, no, I'm you, saying you that just the owners of the report, you sat here which is the National the world Committee of that you have not cited, okay. you have and not cited, okay. you have not cited, okay. cited the Please report, don't, you have not read don't it. I'm saying that the leadership of my party, I believe, that who are the owners of the report, I'm saying that it is fake, and I stand by it. One radio station interviewed one of the coordinators of the report. So you say, no, no, I'll allow him to wrap up. Let him show me the report. One of the coordinators. Have you seen the report? One of the coordinators. Have you seen the report? As a booklet? Yes. No, but as a soft copy. I've okay, read yes, Oh, you've okay. seen a soft copy. You see, there's this guy mm. who responded to interviews by a radio station in Accra okay. and told the world that, yes, it is a fact that on election day, mm. they were fed by the MPP. Mm. And therefore, by 4 a.m., they were so hungry, some of them left. And this is what was captured in the report and collaborated by an NDC coordinator for the Upper West Region. 
All right. No, let me call He it. talked let about. Me call he spoke about this. Say, okay. Is it? Let, let me call it. Okay. Okay. Like, we're we're going now, but, but you know, we'll, but you know we'll it's it's what's, what's important <laughs> is that you see they are telling us a report for the party. A, a monitor. Now, a monitor remember, is supposed to be talking from somewhere in Wa. He calls him. He mentioned the name. A monitor. A, a, an election day monitor. Okay. No, a coordinator. No, there is no, 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 no. It's a monitor. We all listen to this. They are, oh, they are, so they are he, fake news. He's a monitor. Oh, it's fake news too. Oh, everything sounds. It's a personal NDC. If he's was he not a, a monitor? Report, is that not fake news? Okay. Thank oh. you very much, See, Honorable. You know, you know the most interesting aspect. Uh, 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 they, yeah. They're not telling the world that mm. the report is for the party and therefore should be discussed by the it's party. It's the property of you the know, party. Before the election, that wrong? when they were they were telling that the, the MPP was a disunited party and uh, all that, mm. they were quoting a report, mm. a party report that we never put it out there to the. Mm. Public domain, and that was what it is. Isn't it for tax? Uh, no, 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 We did not write a report. Are you jubilant oh, over, over? No, no, we're not. You see, I'm have very much concerned. Them I'm, 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 I'm in politics, I'm a politician. If a party Mr. 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 I thank you very much for your time. Is the Ashanti Regional <laughs> Secretary of the New Patriotic Party? And Rudolph Amelia Atigo is the MP for Chiana Park. And any of my guests this morning on the news review segment, I trust you enjoyed yourself.